what you focus on habitually will develop. And once it gets into your heart, then the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I believe this to be very so. It has been documented reports of people that have been in severe accidents and they were knocked unconscious or in a coma. Their brain was kind of like knocked into neutral, if you will. And the things that would come out of their mouth while they were knocked out in a coma-type state, but yet they would be speaking, it would be some of the most awful stuff that you ever heard in your life because what had happened was they had been programming that into their spirits. They might not have ever said it in front of you while they were awake and in control, but while their brain was knocked into neutral, it just came right out because it had been imprinted upon their hearts. They talk about people that go in for surgery and they put them to sleep. The things that they speak and say while under sedation. The Bible tells us that uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Now let me tell you where some dangerous ground is, but it could be dangerous in a good sense. Once your heart and your mouth agree and become one, that's a dangerous place to be. It's one thing to focus on it, but then it's another thing after you're focused on it to begin to agree with it and to speak it. I believe once you focus the image in the realm of the spirit, then you begin to speak it out, it's going to release it into the natural realm you wonder why some people can go and get things it seems like from God and you can't they have learned how to use the key that God has given it will manifest in your life do you remember the story of Jesus when he spoke to the fig tree and it shriveled up and died it was not until the moment that Jesus spoke did the tree respond Jesus could have thought it Jesus could have focused on it. Jesus could have done everything that you and I could do, but until he spoke it, that tree did not respond. And until you get focused and get it in your heart and then speak it, your circumstance or whatever it is will not respond. Matthew 6, 31 says, therefore do not worry saying, what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to wear? How many of you know all these are things are natural to life? If I didn't come up here this morning with clothes on, something would be wrong. God's going to provide me clothes. God's going to provide you clothes. I got tickled at one little kid. You know what they said that skin was? Something you wear to keep people from throwing up that looks at you. Because they had been studying what the inside of the body looked like. So that's what skin's for, to keep it up if you're looking at someone. God gives us everything that's natural to life. Everything that we need. And it seems easier, more Christians. Now, I'm having to say Christians because I seem to hang around Christians more than I do out in the world because I'm not working anymore. And I hear Christians. But you know what I hear mo most of them saying? It's getting bad, it's bad, and it's getting worse. Times are getting harder. I don't know what I'm going to do. There are no jobs. I'm afraid I'm going to get laid off. I'm afraid I'm not going to get a job. I am poor. I'm pitiful. I'm sick. Lack, 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 lack. That's what I hear them. I hear more positive things from people that don't serve God. What's wrong? God says the entrance of light comes through His Word. And when light comes in, there's a transference of something that happens. Now, Jesus is showing us by his example and the fig tree and all the things he did. He said, do not link your heart and your mouth in the negative. Because what you speak negative is going to come back upon you. You are either... You then these things will be added, 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 added. God doesn't want to take away... God wants to add. But what are you supposed to seek? What are we supposed to seek? The kingdom and his righteousness. Most of us read that and we're clueless. It goes right over our heads. Where is the kingdom of God? Where is the kingdom of God? It's within you. That's where the kingdom of God is. So Jesus the king is telling us in his word not to focus on things that you can see with your eyes. You may see lack in your life with your eyes. But he said, rather, 
began to focus on the things in the spirit kingdom, in the spirit realm, and that means then I will not be moved by what I see. My circumstances will not rattle me because the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. Every one of us walks through bad times and good times, but he says we need to learn how to operate, to use the key in the things of the spirit realm in the spirit kingdom. That's the real kingdom. That is the realm of reality. We think this here is real. This is not real. The kingdom, uh, the spirit kingdom is the more real. And he says, if you will learn how that kingdom works and how it operates, he said, then you can have whatever it is that you need. As I begin to allow the entrance or the image of God's word, he's going to bring light. And when light comes, there's a transfer. And then I can see all my needs met. Then I can begin to see there's no lack in my life. Then I can begin to see that I've got divine health, no poverty. I can begin to see myself healed. You know, there's an old saying, what you see is what you get. It is truly whatever you can see up here in your mind's eye is what you're going to get. And yet the Word of God will help you to change what you see up here. You need to change what you see up here. Then you can speak. Then you learn how the kingdom of God operates. He said, if you will learn how it operates, and his righteousness, he says, and all these things that you need for life will be added unto you. It's first the spiritual, then the natural. You remember the camera example that I gave a while ago with my husband? Let me give another example with it. It is the same way, the way we are of what we habitually think on. Do you know that I could look at your life or you could look at mine or anybody's life and I can tell you after being with you for a short period of time what you've been habitually thinking on? Because you are living right now what you have been thinking on and focusing on for the past few years. You are living in that result right now. What I focus on in the things of the Spirit, they will manifest. And I don't care who we are. It is a law like gravity. It is there. And we must not violate it because if we do, we suffer the consequences. Now, whatever I focus on habitually is going to happen in my own life. I'll use me because it, I've had lots of negative to happen, or I have had a crop of negative stuff that I wish to God, but see, I didn't know. I had been focusing on the wrong things. Once I got a hold of some of these things in God's Word and begin to apply them, then I can see how I can change those things. Because God's Word does bring entrance to light. It causes me to start seeing something different than what my circumstances is telling me. Now, if I took a picture of this piano, and I took it down to Walmart and had it developed. And I went to pick my pictures up and they gave me picture, uh, or they gave me back a picture of the piano. How many of you know that's what they should have given me if that's what I took a picture of? But I get mad and I say, no, I want pictures of animals at the zoo. I took a picture of that piano, but I want animals at a zoo. Well, this camera's crummy and I throw my camera down and stomp all over it because I'm mad. I took a picture of the piano, but I wanted pictures of animals at the zoo. How many of you know I need to have my head prayed for? Something's wrong with me because my camera did what it was supposed to do. There is nothing wrong with my camera. It was doing a perfect job. It developed exactly what I focused on. Can you see how this applies to our lives? We focus on bad, 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 and then we expect good. It won't happen. God is saying, renew your mind to my word. Why do you think God said, tell the weak to say I'm strong? Did God want you to start lying? He knew that you needed to begin to start training your mind to see up here in your mind's eye because then it would make a transference into your heart and once it gets there, then you're going to be strong. Let's learn to do it. Your eyes, the imagination of your heart is the lens. Whatever you focus on, whether it's negative or positive, in, whether it's the Word of God or not the Word of God, will develop in your life. And if all you do is focus on poverty, lack, sickness, then guess what? That's what you will get. God says today, I said before you, life or death, you choose. He said, today I will give you a blessing or you can have a curse. 
you choose. God will never usurp your choice. If you choose not to believe God's word, then quit blaming God and everyone else for your failures and life not working. God is a good God and gives everything necessary to every one of us equal. It is what you decide to do with the key. And, I, you know, it's time we quit blaming everything and everyone, especially God. Take responsibility for your own life. I was given the key, and I've had to do the same thing you're going to have to do, is take that key, put it in that ignition, and then you can go anywhere you want to go in the Word of God, and you're going to see things happen right. But you've got to make the choice. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. Matthew 6, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and how it operates. See, y'all don't read it that way, but that's really the way you should read it. Seek first the kingdom of God and how it operates and his righteousness. Then these things will be added. He is telling us plainly that if you will hear by the Spirit how the kingdom operates, you will not have to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, or what you're going to wear. It won't matter if you're in the Sahara Desert or if you're in downtown Dallas. It doesn't matter where I am at in the natural. See, I made my choice a long time ago to believe what God said. Where I am, God is, and all is well in my life. And I have a lot of hell come in my life, just like every one of you. But I've made my decision. I'm going to serve God, and he'll work out the details. So why should I even be anxious and worry? Especially when he says, be anxious for nothing. Don't fear. So no matter where I'm at in the natural, because I have allowed the entrance of God's Word into my heart, every day I program the Word of God into me. All you have to do is just follow me around or ask my family. I listen to the Word of God. I talk the Word of God because it's going to be imprinted upon my heart. You see, what most people want to do is to call upon God when they're in a real situation and they've never put anything into their deposit. They have nothing in the good treasury of their heart. So therefore, when they go to make a deposit, I mean a withdrawal, they've made no deposit, so they have nothing to withdraw. Now, God in his mercy helps us. But there comes a time when he says, okay, kids, you need to learn. And I want us to learn because it works. So you see, it doesn't matter where I'm at if I'm in the desert. Or if I'm in Dallas, if I need some food or I need some water, God is going to provide for me because his word says he would supply all of my needs. He will get the ravens to me. He will cause a man to come by in the desert. I don't know who'd come by, but he promised me he'd take care of me because that's what's been programmed inside of me, and he will give me those provisions that are necessary for life. Not just so I can come to church, but so I can keep living. God's concerned with you living. And where I am makes no difference to God. Now, do you really believe God's Word? Do you really believe that? Or are you giving mental assent to it to appease your spiritual consciousness? We're living in the most perilous times that we could, but yet the most wonderful times. I could be downtown Dallas this morning as some people and have never put the Word of God into my heart. And do you not die in the land of plenty? There are people down there this morning that are doing without and starving to death, literally. And God would have much trouble getting things to me because I had not programmed his word and believed it. Oh, he could send someone in his mercy to, to give me a quick fix or whatever. But there are a lot of people that are literally dying everywhere because they've not chosen to listen to the word of God. And it's your choice to program that word to hear. Faith comes by hearing. If you look in the original language, remember I told you how we need to focus down and understand? In the Greek it says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing again. Not one time, not two times, but keep on. Because you know why? It's got to get in here to get down into your spirit. And once it gets into your spirit, then you can speak it and then it's going to happen. Second Peter's not in my text this morning, but he says to gird up the loins of your mind. Did you know that your mind has loins? Do you know what loins are? The reproductive part of your body. Did you know your mind has got a reproductive part? It is the creative side where God wants you to gird up. Do you know what gird up means? By constant repetition. 
So there we go again by hearing, 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 self-talk, 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 meditate, meditate. I'm going to believe what God's Word says. And if I do that enough, if you did it five minutes a day by yourself and worked your way up to 15 minutes, you know what kind of powerhouse you'd be? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, and it gets down in here and there's a transference of power into your life. Then you can speak and it happens. It is awesome the way this works. God's instructions work. We're the ones that haven't been working it. The law of the kingdom is, I will attract things to me because that's the way that I have allowed my heart to be programmed. Every day I say, men are going to give to me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, they're going to give to me. And every day I get things given to me because in my heart and mind I've programmed that. I say I am going to be a partaker of his divine health and I'm going to keep on till I see that totally manifested in my life. Constant repetition. The image of your heart is the blueprint for your life. The blueprint is mega important, even in the natural. I could give a builder, an architect, an engineer, I could give them this beautiful, uh, I mean, I could give them this paper with an old shack drawn, because that's about all I could draw, something that looked like an old shack, and I'd say, now, I want this bill, but I want it to look like the Lowe's Anatole. Now, I gave it to the builder, and he takes it to the architect and the engineer, and they didn't talk to me. Well, they look at my little blueprint, hand drawn. You know what I'm going to get? A shack. Do you know that architects and engineers will not go any other way but what the blueprint says? Yes, they can modify it after they've made all the changes, but after they've had serious meetings and stuff. But whatever that blueprint says is exactly what they will do to build that structure according to it. And the same way in the spirit realm, it is the details and the image which is the blueprint for your life. You can decide what you want your life to be like. The blueprint for your life is what you have allowed to be developed on your heart. The same principle as the undeveloped film. Before it is developed, whatever I focus that film on is what I will get. Whatever you focus your life upon is what you will get. Proverbs 4.20. It says, My son or daughter, attend to my words, but don't just attend to them. Give consent that they may come in to your heart and admit to my saying. In other words, you can't just give mental assent to the Word of God. You are going to have to give it access and agree with it. Proverbs 21 says, Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the gate of your heart. He's not talking about physical eyes. Again, and when he says, Let them not depart from your eyes, how many of you know that if I put a Bible around my head like this and taped it on and tried to drive, I'd get thrown in jail? Because it's a woman, you can't drive with this, you can't see. When he says, don't let them depart from your sight, he is saying, let them not depart from your heart. Keep them in the center of your heart. The heart is the gate. He's talking sight and heart. That is the way it is transferred one from the other. What you see is what you really will get. For when you get into the Word of God and it gets into your heart, he says, when you learn how to operate these principles, and it is a matter of choice, it is a matter of just trying to do it, and it won't come easy. It's a disciplined lifestyle. He says, if you can learn how to do it, he said, it will be life, life. Life isn't just breathing and your heart beating. Life is everything that concerns you to make it work. And it's the greatest miracle of all. And life is a choice. Proverbs 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence and above all that you guard it because out of your heart flows the springs of life. In other words, there in Proverbs 4, he's giving us the Rexall or the prescription of how life works. It doesn't matter what you're in right today. It doesn't matter your health problems. The answer is still the same. You must keep your heart not your mind, your number one priority above all, and that is to what? Keep your heart. 
I like to look at new translations, and Moffat's one of the best I've found. It says, For out of your heart will flow the forces that will determine what your future life will be. This morning, we are all the sum total of our thoughts and choices of our past right today. And this is not somebody's fantasy. This is the Word of God. He gives us the law of life, His principles, and if you violate the principle, you suffer the consequence, and it's nobody's fault but your own because you've got the power of choice. See, the Bible teaches us that bad things come into everybody's life. None of us are exempt. Matter of fact, when you get into the will of God, you're probably going to have more hell than you ever had. Period. But it's your choice of what you do with the key. We are the sum total of our thinking from the past today. And if you want things to be different next year, then what you need to do is begin to start renewing your mind to the Word of God so you can be changed. And the entrance of God's Word brings light. Psalms 119, 130. Change the way you think. Renew your mind. Let it get into your heart, the Word of God. God's Word in Psalm 119, 130 says the entrance of God's Word gives light. And when that light comes, you're going to be changed. It's going to give you understanding. It's going to tell you how to live your life. Everything that you need when you learn how to operate. I could teach a whole lot of stuff this morning, but this is very important because it's got to start first right here. Out of your heart will flow the, the forces that's going to cause what your future life is going to be. What do you want your future life to be? You've got the power of choice to decide. Renew your mind to the Word of God. Do you know that a habit can be made or broken within 30 to 40 days? So that means that if you could say from this day to day, for 30 days or 40 days, I'm going to write out what I want my life to be like, and I'm going to think it, I'm going to meditate it, I'm going to self-talk it, I'm going to speak it, I'm going to pray it, and I'm going to let it get from my mind down into my spirit realm and into my heart, and then guess what's going to happen? You're going to begin to see things change in your life to line up with what you are saying. It is a law that God put. He said, you learn how the kingdom of God operates. And he said, then all these things will be added to you. And it's our choice. Every one of us. I'm living today the sum total of decisions and thoughts that I make, but I'm not nowhere near happy where I'm at. So I have made my choice to start renewing my mind to the Word of God in some different areas because I want different things. And that's where every one of us has to start where you are today. You can't wait till everything's right because nothing will ever be right. You cannot wait on anybody or anything. You've got to make the choice today whether I feel like it or not. I'm going to live by faith and I want to change. I want my life to work. I want to know that I know that I know wherever I'm at, God will supply my needs. And I believe that with all of my heart. The only times that I get myself all upset is when I try to answer God's answer <laughs> and not let him work out the details but then when i back off and say okay god i've given it to you and i just continue living and before you know it then he causes it to work out i don't know if this has helped any of you or not i didn't know who was going to be here and who not i know linda's on vacation john's in the hospital and i know most people don't even know we're having services on sunday morning we're just seeing what god does but i want you to know that god knew you were going to be here and that you needed to hear this word because I promise you, God's Word brings light. Photos of change. Renew your mind to the Word of God and be changed, transformed. You can be whatever you want to be. If it lines up with the Word of God, you can be anything you want from the Queen down to whatever. Because God's Word says it. Let's stand up.